Hi everyone, welcome to this little video on alternative vector pathways. Um, this is always one of these little bits of vectors that I think to get your head around initially can be a wee bit tricky. Um, but once you see it, I think it's very, very straightforward. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about just what is an alternative vector pathway. We're going to do two examples with a few questions and pointers around each. Um, what we've got here, we've got a parallelogram, and that's really important. So things we know about parallelograms are that they have two pairs of parallel sides. So this uh, side PQ and side SR are parallel, and side PS and QR are parallel, um, and also that QR, PS are the same length as are PQ and SR. And that's really important for the kind of discussion that we're about to have. So this is a parallelogram. Um, what we're going to be looking at today is the naming of vectors, and you've already done this um, in last week's lessons. You've looked at how to name it using the endpoints of the vector. So this vector here could be called um, PQ, and because we moved from P to Q, the, the arrow goes in that direction. Um, and... It has another name, yeah? So the vector going from P to Q is also called A, right? So these are its two names. These are not alternate vector pathways. These are the same vector pathway. Yeah, it's just that they have two names. Now with vector pathway questions, the tendency is that we write the pathway using the lowercase letters, but sometimes initially it's helpful to do it using um, the capital letters and the endpoints of the vector, okay? One of the main things that we have to get our head around is that any vector that is the same size and travels in the same direction as another vector can be called the same thing. Okay, so if we have a little look at our diagram, we can see that PQ and SR um, represent the same vector. They are the same length and they travel in the same direction. So if I want to go this way along SR, I can also call SR A, right? It's the same, it's just another vector A. And of course, that means I can do something similar with PS. You can maybe guess what's coming here. PS, if I go in that direction from P to S, is the same size and goes in the same direction as vector B, okay? So actually on this diagram, we have two vector A's and two vector B's that maybe we couldn't see initially. One thing that's really important is if I want to go the other way along a vector, so let's say I went from P to Q, and PQ we already had a little look at, so PQ going from P to Q was called vector A. Let's say I want to go on a journey, but I want to go back along that vector in the opposite direction. Well, its name would change in this format. Remember, we've talked about this before. The arrow always points to the right. It's the vectors that change, uh, the letter, sorry, that change direction. So the starting letter, the letter that you start at comes first. So we'd start at Q and go to P if I wanted to go the wrong direction. But how does this name change? Well, this name just becomes negative A, yeah? If you want to go in the opposite direction, the same distance still, yeah, it's the same length, just in the entirely opposite direction, then we have the negative version of the vector. Okay, let's start doing some alternative vector pathway stuff. So um, I'm going to give you a little journey and we're going to talk about what I mean by alternative vector pathway. So I want to describe the journey that goes from P to R, yeah, using an alternative route. So you can like think about this like a map and you're, you're going on a little journey and maybe these are all roads. And I want to go um, from town P to town R, but this red road is blocked, right? There's roadworks, typical. And so what we need to do is we need to find an alternative route, okay? Um, we have quite a few different routes we could take on our little parallelogram. Um, I'm going to go with what was probably the most obvious one. If I want to go from P to R, the first thing I could do, I could go from P to Q. Yeah, I could go along that little road. And then, and, and so I'm just using an add to say, right, the next part of the journey is to go from Q 
to r. And hopefully you would agree that gets me there, right? To get from p to r, I could go from p to q and then from q to r, and I end up having started at p at r. But like I said earlier, we tend not to use this notation as much so much as the lowercase letters. So pq, going from p to q, we already know is called a. And going from q to r, we can see is vector b. So the alternative vector pathway going from p to r is to go along a and then along b. Okay, let's try another one. Let's say this time I don't want to go from P to R, this time I want to go from S to Q. Okay, let me just mark that on. So I'm going to start at S and I want to get to Q. Okay, let's start at S. I want to get to Q. So there's its name. Start at S, get to Q. And that road's blocked again. Okay, I've got a couple of different options. Um, I could go up this vector and along this one. I can go along this one and up this one. Okay, I'm going to go along the way first, but both would get you to the same solution. Uh, and that might be something you want to have a little play around with. Okay, so I'm going to start at S. I'm going to go across the way first. So I'm going to go from S to R. And then I'm going to go from R up to Q. Okay, let's try and change these then for the lowercase letters. So I want to go from S to R, then from R to Q. To go from S to R, well, that's just vector A, isn't it? It goes that direction, it's that size, it's vector A. If I want to go from R to Q, though, I have to go along this vector B, but in the opposite direction, right? Because the arrow's pointing down the way, but I want to go up the way. So if I come back to here, remember if I want to go the opposite direction along a vector, it just becomes the negative of that vector. So what I'm doing in this case is I'm subtracting b. So instead of adding vector b, I'm subtracting vector b. Yeah? So I'm going along a and subtracting b because I'm going in the opposite direction. Okay, uh, let's try one final example with this diagram and then we're going to make things a little bit more challenging with example two. Okay, let's say this time I want to go from R to P. Okay, so I want to go from R to P. So again, here's the name of the vector I want to try and find an alternative route for. The main route's blocked. And so I'm going to go from R to P, but I can't go along that main road. Okay, I'm going to go from R to S first of all. Again, you could go from R to Q and from Q to P, but I'm going to go this way. So I'm going from R to S, and then I'm going to go from S, because I'm now at S, I'm going to go up to P. Okay, let's just check the names then. R, S, it kind of looks like vector A, but it's going in the opposite direction again. So it's negative A. And then I am going from S to P, but again in the wrong direction. So subtract B. Okay. Um, have a look at the other video for example two, where we explore a few more challenges.